Hi, I'm Kristen Griego with Edwards Instrument Company, and today I'm gonna to go over the AR valves and what you can do to keep your trombone working amazingly. So we got a email from a customer and he had loud valves. So when you have noisy AR valves, it generally means the short bearing and long bearing need lubrication. So you just take your valve oil, doesn't have to be ours, just thin. We actually put ours in a little flux bottle and then take your rotor caps off this side and you just put a dollop here, put to be, put a dollop there, and then just activate the triggers, okay? Then the most important is a long bearing back here. You wanna get oil in between the stop arm and onto the long bearing in there, between the brass rotor and the bronze bearing plate. So uh, it's hard to do this for the camera. So what I like to do is tilt it where gravity is gonna have the oil go into the long bearing. The needle goes in between and put a little squirt of valve oil in there. Boobity, boobity. And yes, you do have to make that sound. And then wiggle the triggers and that'll get the lubrication into the long bearing and I keep the trombone at this angle as I'm activating it to get that going in there. Then next thing is we grab the spindle oil with the needle oiler and we again put it in a flux box because we're doing a lot of these trombones during the day and on the rod ends you put some on either side of the rod end Oops. and then you grab the linkage and move it back and forth. That'll get the lubrication into the mini ball itself. Now, if you ever get a hesitation, periodically, like once a year, I like to grab these mini balls and just move them and make sure that they're moving freely because I have seen it where these uh, mini balls seize um, between the outside right here and the inside of the ball. So if you, like this one is moving freely, everything's great, but I have seen them where they just kind of go and seize. You gotta replace them when that happens. Um, not sure why, um, they're the best ones we can get. We spend quite a bit on them, uh, each one, but uh, I have seen those C's. Uh, so keep an eye out for though that issue. Um, then after you've got your long bearing and your short bearing on the rotor oiled, I like to take just regular valve oil and I take my main tuning slide off. I usually put a piece of cloth in here to catch it because, well, not here at Edwards, honestly, because we're oiling everything. We've got absorbent uh, pig mat down uh, so it doesn't matter so much but I take this in a circular fashion I coat the, <clears throat> the inside here and so it now will come on the outside of the uh, inner tube of your neck pipe and then I wiggle the valves and just try and get as much oil in there you can you can oil in here as well I don't normally oil this outer one um, but anything that's dropping straight into the rotor I'll try and oil it and then I'll flip the horn upside down take the cloth out and do the same thing this way. Coat the inside of the receiver right there. I'll show you. Right there, squeezing it, and then activate the triggers. And make sure you have a cloth down or something. If you're, if you're sitting down, you're gonna get oil all over your pants. If you're in a nice you know, carpeted or wood uh, flooring, you can get oil everywhere when you're doing this, so be careful. I like to do it in the evening as well, so um, I can leave just like this on a trombone stand. And then the next morning, it's all done. Uh, the cloth has done its job and I'm off and running. Um, what else? Uh, trigger alignment. This one actually, uh, it's a little off. You have your marks, boom, 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 north, south, east, west. It should be up and down. This one, there it's good. And so what needs to happen is I would take the stop arm off, grab um, a small razor blade and shave like we're talking like 20 thousandths at a time very small amount and then until that gets perfectly in alignment so those are the tips and tricks on how to keep your ar valves in top operating fashion um if you ever have any issues uh just give us an email or call i, I can be reached at chris chris at edwards-instruments.com 
send me a video of your horn or picture um, and I can do an analysis virtually and figure it out. Springs. Every now and then you might get a shh, 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 shh sound on your trombone and that's, these springs are made of stainless steel. And so I actually oil them with the spindle oil as well. And I'll put some oil on either side of the stop arm. So boopity, the spring itself, and then boopity on the other side. And then I activate it. Okay, and that gets oil in the bearing of itself. It's a bushing, but you, you guys get the idea. Um, so any external moving parts, I use this. Same thing on the F trigger down here. I'll put a little oil on either side of the spring here. And then on either side where it goes into the stop arm to get into the, the bushing on the F trigger. So just by doing these few things, you'll get your, um, to be quiet. Oh, last thing I'll shut up. Periodically, you need to change the rubber bumpers. Why? Because when you're oiling this thing every week, like you should be, um, keeping it quiet, um, the oil, like this oil, um, will actually over time break down the rubber bumpers and make them harder, which will make your horn louder. So periodically, and when you order them from us, get like six bumpers. Um, if you're a bass, get eight. So you just have them on hand, keep them in a little uh, baggie. Um, and what we do is I pop them out and you can put a little dollop of super glue and then push them in with a small screwdriver and then let them dry and then take a straight blade razor and trim back a little bit at a time watching your marks until you get it perfectly north, south, or east, or west on the um, unengaged and the engaged side. I prefer to have a harder bumper on the engaged side uh, because when you push down, you, you're putting more pressure than whenever you release it. In the unengaged, I like to have a soft, so it's quiet on the way back, but when you go down, it stops, boom. If it's too soft a durometer up the top, you can go, you can make your port alignment go out while you're playing and your horn will feel differently. Under stress, if you push uh, softer or harder, it's, it's not ideal because then the horn starts feeling um, different um, if, if that starts happening. So I prefer to have harder on the engaged position, softer on the return, uh, durometer rubber. So I hope these tips and tricks uh, help and keeps your horn functioning well and hope everybody's doing well.